that's when then we decided we would try this house meeting approach in in uh, New Hampshire. Yeah. And and actually, the last time we really used it extensively was for Nancy Pelosi. Yeah. In San Francisco, in her first campaign in '87, when Saul Burton died and she decided to run, she had no real organization in San Francisco. She was yeah. sort of unknown. So, myself and a couple of other people from the farm workers uh, put together a six-week campaign, uh, organization-building campaign, and we use this house meeting approach. So the, the reason that we, we, we talk about this so much in the book is, is kind of, it got so ignored after Iowa, because, you know, Dean creators in Iowa, and after the scream, there's really nothing you can do. I mean, I think they did as, go as well as they could in New Hampshire to get him back for a respectable second, but I mean, the media well, had think, already gotten I, him at that point. I think the, the payoff was, I mean, if you think about this, the, what the organizers did in New Hampshire was uh, hold a thousand of these house meetings in about a four-month period a and the way it was done You have to make a list of 50 people to invite to your house meeting and the organizer sat there So you made that list and sure enough most people could make a list of 50 So it meant you were going beyond your immediate circle Reaching out and then the organizer sat there while the person was training how to get on the phone and invite those people to come to their house it's this very high accountability in this what it meant was that they made they invited 50,000 people to come to these meetings, yeah. uh, of which 10,000 actually showed up. And in a state like New Hampshire, to do that in like four months, that was huge. Yeah. I mean, it just reverberated. And while it wouldn't didn't overcome the scream, uh, it was the foundation for Dean for America. I think it had a lot to do with New Hampshire going blue uh, at that time. And <coughs> it created a kind of civic capital uh, in the state because of all the people that were trained in, in, in leadership and in doing leadership work with others and taking responsibility for the political process. Mm -hmm. And then Obama uses it in South Carolina, which exactly. I was just going to yeah. segue into, because Obama is in sort of a similar situation early on in South Carolina that Dean was in New Hampshire, which is that you know Hillary Clinton has locked up a lot of the political establishment, particularly a lot of the black political establishment. Exactly. South Carolina politics is done even in a more old school way than New Hampshire, which is you basically have to buy people off. Um, <laughs> And you have to give people consulting contracts, you know, five, give a, this pastor $5,000, this, this state senator $5,000, and that's how you do it. And interestingly enough, Obama tries to do it that way. Originally, they go down and they find this big pastor in Columbia, and they say, who has a 10,000-member mega church, and they say, okay, well, we'll give you $5,000 a month. And he says, okay, let me get back to you. He talks to the Clinton people. Clinton people say, we'll give you $20,000 a month. Oh, Jesus. So, so they're like, so, so like, they're like, this is before money was pouring into the Obama oh, yeah. people. Like, we cannot, we're not going to keep up with this. Same time, a bunch of young dean organizers, you know, some of whom took, you know, Jeremy Bird, a key guy who took Marshall's class and then went to um, Dean New Hampshire and then later went to Obama, South Carolina, are thinking, we need to find a way to bypass the political establishment. So they exactly. try to do these house meetings too. And a lot of skepticism from the campaign, right? Yeah. Um, but as you say, it, it fits beautifully because the Dean campaign was an insurgent campaign in New Hampshire and the Obama campaign was an insurgent in campaign South in South Carolina. Exactly. But I think what people don't realize about a lot of this stuff is you know, that there was a sort of internal fights in the campaign, right? That it wasn't inevitable this was gonna be the model. Uh, not inevitable at all. It was very unclear because what, what they knew, they knew they had to, uh, I'm talking now about the Obama folks, knew that they had to do something in the four in the four first states, and Iowa was a super priority, and then there was New Hampshire, South Carolina, and Nevada, but they didn't really know what to do. Yeah. Um, in in Iowa, they hired um, uh, Steve Hildebrand and Paul Tooze, and basically ran the 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 Kerry campaign again, which was done very well in Iowa. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was organizer intensive, organizers developing relationships with people. Uh, to come to caucuses, and so you can't win a caucus without organizing people because they actually have to go to the caucus, and then they actually have to decide something. So where you have a caucus, I'm a big fan of caucuses because it forces the whole process of mobilization and leadership development to happen, without yeah. which it doesn't happen. And so they, they had that there. In South Carolina was a primary. They didn't quite know what to do, and that's where the whole house meeting approach played in there. In New Hampshire, they uh, they stuck with the old school. They didn't they didn't do either one, uh, and it was a disaster. And they lost New Hampshire, and uh, Nevada was also very problematic. So it wasn't like at the top they had figured out yeah. how this was going to be done. They knew that people were going to matter. That you have to turn out people to win these close elections, but it very much then became a question of what 
what could demonstrate its effectiveness